So what's really happening when we are standardizing data with z-scores? Remember, we, we've been talking about z-scores. Let me move this over. <clears throat> but we are, once again, standardizing our data when we find a z-score. So what are we doing? Well, if you think about the formula, there's a <clears throat> excuse me, there's actually two things that we're doing. The formula for a z-score is you take your data value minus the mean, and then you divide by the standard deviation. So we are shifting data by adding or subtracting values, which is the mean. When we subtract this mean, we are shifting data to uh, a new spot, and then we are actually rescaling data when we divide by the standard deviation. So we're shifting and rescaling data. But what does that mean? What, what, what's really going on here? Well, if we think back to our example from before when we were comparing the Ewoks and the Wookiees, and we didn't know, if you haven't watched that video, you should probably go back and watch those. Um, but we're rescaling the data and shifting it. So when I, if I want to take this data right here, if I want to take, let's say, this distribution, and I want to standardize it by changing it into z-scores, then what I'm doing is this. When I go up here and take every single one of these data values, because that's what I'm going to do. This is a distribution, and I have a bunch of data values. When I take all of these data values, and I subtract the mean, I am shifting the data over to this spot, okay? Then when I divide by the standard deviation, I am rescaling the data. I'm changing the shape of it. Maybe it's spreading it out. Maybe it's making it taller. Maybe it's make, make, making it less spread out. It just depends, but it is definitely rescaling the data. So if I start with something like this, when I subtract the mean, it shifts it. It shifts the entire distribution. And when I divide by the standard deviation, it's rescaling it in some way. And then let's say this is my Wookiee data. So that first one was my Ewok data. Now I've got my Wookiee data over here. So what can I do with this? Well, once again, I'm going to find all the z-scores Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to find all of the z-scores for this data set, which means I'm going to standardize this data set or this distribution. And when I subtract the mean, I am shifting this distribution right over here. And then when I divide by the standard deviation, I am rescaling the data. I better rescale it again. Because when we shift and rescale our data, what we are doing for two different, the, the reason that we do this is because we are, we want to compare two different data sets. So those two data sets that I just had, the tall skinny one and the, and the one that was more spread out, those got shifted and rescaled so that they, their distributions now look the same. I have standardized them. So now that they are standardized, I can make comparisons between the two data sets. So when I find z-scores or standardize my data, what is happening? If you think about GoSox again, the three most important parts of GoSox, even though we have gaps and occurrence and outliers, the three most important parts of GoSox are the shape, the center, and the spread. So let's take a look. When I standardize the data, or standardize into z-scores, what happens to the center, the shape, and the spread? Well, let's start with a shape. When I standardize into z-scores, the shape does not change. Standardizing z-scores does not change the shape of a distribution of a variable. So if my distribution is bell-shaped and symmetric, when I find the z-scores, the, the standardized distribution is still going to be bell-shaped and symmetric. Now that's also true with a skewed distribution. If I had something that's skewed left, a distribution that's skewed left, and I find all the z-scores and standardize, then my distribution is still going to be skewed left. <clears throat> well, what about the center? 
when I standardize into Z scores, the center changes by making the mean zero. So if we had a mean like we had for the Ewoks and the Wookiees, uh, which were in the positives, I think the the mean for the the mean height of a Wookiee was 85.5 inches tall. Well, when I standardize things, it takes the center of the distribution and moves it from 85.5, which is way over here, and moves it to zero. Okay? And then what about the spread? Well, when I standardize into Z scores, it changes the spread by making the standard deviation one. So not only did we shift it, but when we rescale it, it changes the spread of the distribution from whatever it was. I think for the Wookiees, the distribution was 5.2 inches, or I should say the standard deviation of the distribution was 5.2 inches. But when I standardize, it changes the standard deviation into one. This, these two points are very important to remember. Okay, when you standardize z-scores, the mean becomes zero, and the standard deviation of a standardized distribution is always one. This will always be true, and it has to be true, because if I did, what would be the purpose of standardizing two different sets of data to make comparisons if when I standardized both of them, I ended up with a different mean and a different standard deviation? I still wouldn't be able to compare them. But when I shift and rescale the two distributions like it did before, I'm able to compare them because both of them have now have a mean of zero and both of them now have a standard deviation of one. So that's what's happening when we standardize these scores.